Hi, I'm Rico, and today we're going to have a look at the MSI B450i Gaming Plus AC. It's an ITX motherboard. I've purchased it because I'm upgrading my editing PC with a Ryzen 7 2700 and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 MHz memory. And this is my choice of motherboard to pull all of that together. I think this is the best bang for bucks ITX motherboard and I'm going to show you why. Okay, so let's just start very quickly with what's in the box. We've got a manual, we've got two antennas for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, we've obviously got an IO shield, we have an M.2 screw and a DVD. I don't know why they still put DVDs in the boxes but hey ho and then we have two SATA cables. Okay, so let's have a look at the motherboard. Okay, so let's just start with what's on the back of the motherboard. We have two USB 2s, we have PS2, display port, HDMI, four USB 3.1s, we then have a Realtek Gigabit LAN, then we have the connectors for the antennas, which is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and then we have the audio. So the reason why I think this is the best bang for buck budget ITX motherboard is because of the VRMs which are situated under this heatsink. Uh, for the money it definitely has the best potential for upgradability to possibly even the 3900X or even 4900X in the future. I'm confident with good airflow that this uh, motherboard will stay relatively cool uh, well, cool enough to do the job anyway. So that's one big reason why I purchased the motherboard. Another reason is the layout. So, for example, the CPU fan headers are nicely located. We also have LEDs here. So if we have a posting problem, the LED will light up and let us know uh, where the issue lies. We have USB 3.1 header and USB 2 headers just there. We have four SATA connectors. And then all the other connectors like the front panel headers all are all located in good locations and also the PCI Express slot is, um, how would you describe that? It's basically strengthened so it's kind of got like metal armour around it. The clear CMOS jumper is right here. So that is a bit of an issue because if you put the I.O. plate on the back of the motherboard, you literally cannot get to the clear CMOS jumper. So there's no way of actually getting to it, especially when on my PC, the actual power supply sits over the motherboard. So it's a major problem that you probably wouldn't uh, you know, come to unless you actually have an issue. Let's say you've been messing around with the settings, you've tried a bit of an overclock and it won't um, it, it won't boot into Windows, so you have to reset the CMOS by shorting the jumper, but you physically can't do that. You would literally have to take the computer apart. So I do have a fix, and the fix is this. So this is a power switch. Uh, it's used by miners, and it's also used for people who um, maybe have a test, test bench system and they need a power switch. So what I shall be doing is I shall be linking or connecting this onto the two jumpers here and then I shall somehow put this switch out the way so that it's inside the PC case and then if I do need to reset the CMOS I can then just press and hold that for up to 10 seconds and that will clear the CMOS. So that's my quick fix for what I consider to be the one major flaw on this motherboard. But for under £2 that's a quick fix for what I would consider um, probably the best budget ITX motherboard on the market. Definitely the best board for around £120 anyway. So yeah, that's my quick overview. It's more of a vloggy type thing. I just wanted to uh, put it out there. Uh, there's plenty of good reviews of this board if you want to get really in-depth. So um, 
yeah that's it thanks for watching hopefully this one wasn't too boring but i'm really excited about this motherboard and this build so there we go cheers